13. Scarlett, Selena, thank you for all of your work, all of you that have put in so many hours. It will be an amazing project. I'm looking forward to next Saturday. I know it's going to be an amazing time. Because so many amazing people have committed so much amazing time. Thank you. Glory. Second Samuel chapter 13. Somebody called me to this week. There are tickets for sale for Son of Man. I got a call this week. Somebody told me, somebody who's not even a member of this church. Somebody that might show up here four or five times a year. They personally sold 70 tickets to the play. Seven zero. And they were begging for more tickets to sell. Praise God. I am so incredibly proud and happy. I love this church. I love every one of you. This is a great collection. The pastor's not perfect. The pastor can be a knucklehead sometimes. But I, God has blessed me with the greatest church in the world. Praise God. Thank God Thank for you, every one of you. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse number 1. When you have it, shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. 2 Samuel chapter 13. Let's get verse number. Praise God. Three. I think we want three. Hallelujah. Brother Philip, why don't you take it to one? Take it to take it 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse number one. I'm gonna I'm gonna just be short, but I I, I want to see if I, I think the scripture will help if we include it all. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, everybody say Absalom. Absalom. I don't know how much we'll talk about him today. Again, my desire is to let us go relatively quickly today. That Absalom, the son of David, who was Absalom the son of? David. Had a fair sister. Everybody say a fair sister. Fair sister. Praise God. Absalom had a sister. And, and I'll get to it a little bit. I'll just read it. Had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. She was his half-sister. Verse number two. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. And I wanted to focus in on verse 2, the second half of verse number 2. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Go back to verse 1, please. Amnon, the son of David, loved her, loved Tamar. Verse 2. He was smitten by his half-sister. But look at the conflict in his thought process. He loved her. He lusted after her. I think the kids have all gone for the most part upstairs. He lusted after his half-sister. But in his mind, that last phrase, Ammon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Although he lusted after his half-sister, there was a frustration in his mind, a battle in his mind. Although he was smitten by her, he lusted for her, he still had enough sense to recognize, I'm not going to do anything to go further in my lust of my half-sister. You with me? Yeah. So he came to the conclusion, or the writer came to the conclusion, 
Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything. So he had this passion, this lustful passion, but he, he made up in his mind. There's a barrier there that I'm not going to go over. Are you with me? Although he had these feelings, he recognized it would be hard for him to pursue these ungodly passions. Verse 3. Verse 3 says, but Amnon had a friend. He lusted after his half-sister, but in his mind, there, that was a barrier he would not cross. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother. I'm not, I, there's so much I can go into. This was David's brother. Do you remember when the prophet went to Jesse's house to look for one of Jesse's sons to be king? And David was out in the field with the sheep. Shemiah was one of the sons that was rejected. The son of Shemiah, I'm sorry, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, and Jonab Jonabab was a very subtle man. Verse 4. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean? Or you're looking frail. Nobody ever told me that you're looking sick. Why are you looking so frail? Why are you looking so sick? Why, you being a king's son, do you look lean from day to day? The devil's often going to come to you with a question mark. Wilt thou not tell me? The devil's often, the devil cannot read your mind. The only way the devil knows what's going inside your mind is when you tell him. Sometimes you just got to keep your mouth shut. He knew something was up, but he didn't know exactly what was up. He said, Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Get verse 5 just to complete it. And Jonab Jonabab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed. Never rebuked him for his thoughts, never corrected him, never told him what the right thing to do. Simply gave him instructions on how to open the door to sin. Lay thee down on thy bed, make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight, that I might see it and eat it at her hand. Verse 6. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I might eat out of her hand. Now, let me stop reading there today. I want to preach to you from just a thought, a man's friend. A man's friend. Father, speak to our hearts today, we pray, that your will we fill this place, and that your word find a place in our heart today, we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. Amen. You may be seated. My mom... Bless her precious soul. One thing she consistently said to all of us children is, you can tell a man by the company he keeps. Anybody else, mother, say that to you? You can praise the name of the Lord God. You can tell a lot about a man. You may not know him, but you can tell a lot about a man by his friends. Somebody said, praise the Lord. I may not know you, Elder Moody, but I, 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 if I know your friends, that tells me a little bit of something about you. Somebody with me today? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We look in, and the life of David is a fascinating examination of uh, just so many kinds of, uh, of troubles. 
And we look at David's life, and David's life reveals a tremendous, we know he was a man after God's own heart. We know he fought Goliath, and he won the battle of Goliath. We know he was a great leader. But one thing about David is David's life reveals to us a tremendous amount of pain. Yes. Amen. Amen. As glorious as the battle is with Goliath, the opposite of that is the amount of pain that David endured his entire life. We see the consequences of the results of his sins. Did David sin? Did David sin? Yes. As a man after God's own heart, he sinned. And the consequences of that sins remain with him forever. Praise God. He looked at Bathsheba and committed adultery with Bathsheba. And the production of it, that, 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 that ungodly relationship produced a baby. And that baby, within moments of birth, died. Praise God. There are consequences to our sins. There's consequences to our wrongdoings. We never sin and, and then escape God free. Amen. Praise God. The result of any adultery always dies. Something dies when we commit adultery. And did God forgive David of his sin with Bathsheba? Yes, yes he did. Someone shout, yes, he did. Yes, he did. God is faithful and just enough that if we confess our faults, he will forgive us of our sins. God does forgive sin. God forgave David of his sin. But although God will forgive us of our sin, we still have to live with the consequences. Hallelujah. Praise God. The prophet Nathan told him that there would be consequences. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 9. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword, the people of Adam. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Does, did God forgive David? Yes, he did. But Nathan said there's going to be consequences because of your sins. When you and I come to an altar of repentance and we throw our hands up in the air and say, God, forgive me. Does he forgive us? Yes, he does. But when you and I turn from that altar and walk out that door, we walk out with our same consequences. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. Praise God. But the consequences of our sins are ours. That's right. We want God to forgive us, and he does. But the results of our sins will last through eternity. The Bible says, even after man comes to God, the sin of the Father lasts to the third and fourth generation. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We got we to gotta be careful what we do, even as children of God. Bible lets us know point number one today. Ammon was so distressed over his lust of his sister, he became physically ill. David did a lot of things, messed up things. 
David had a lot of wives. We uh, look at what name one of David's wives. Michael. Name me another David's wife. One of David's wife. Abigail. Abigail. What about Bathsheba? <laughs> David had multiple wives. Not ordained of God. Maybe forgiven of God. But David had to deal with the consequences of disobeying God. Right. One of David's wives was the name of Mecca. All right, Jeff, Mecca, Mecca. <laughs> Mecca, Mecca was Absalom, Absalom and Tamar's mother. Same father, different mother. Amnon was David's oldest son. David was king of Israel. Who followed King David to the throne? Solomon. The one who should have followed David to the throne was Abner. Abner was David's oldest son, and he was born by him, uh, him Noah, Noah. God will forgive our sins, but the consequences will last forever. And David committed sin. Had all these wives. Now, Mecca was comes from a region, if you do some research, and they were very fair-skinned. And she had, or she bore David two children, Absalom and Tamar. And the Bible says both, because of the mother's DNA, both children were beautiful, fair to look upon. And Absalom and Tamar, one mother. David in this chaotic household had another, his oldest son was Amnon. And Amnon was a half-brother to Absalom and Tamar and, Ab and, and Amnon when they had this chaotic crazy family like we all have man we have some knuckleheads in our family yes we do I got an uncle I won't even tell you about <laughs> and you have the same uncle yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so David and his would gather for morning breakfast. And on one side of that table was Tamar. On the other side of that breakfast table was Amnon. And there was some secret lust in Amnon's heart for his younger half-sister. But as we read, there was something as Amnon said at that table, Elder Rainer, he looked and he lusted. My Lord, Jesus. But he had disciplined himself. I'm not going to pursue it. It's enmity against God. It's unrighteous. It's unholy. Jesus. Praise God. You and I, every single day we live, we got sin in our life. There's sin in our flesh. Every single day, Tyrone, there's things that we want to do because of the flesh. But in, the Bible says, in my flesh, there is no good thing. Every day, there's something that we want to do. But because of the word of God, it puts a barrier there. And we don't pursue it. My God, someone needs to praise God. in this room to 
today. There's some barriers in our life. Yes, yes. Now some of us, we tiptoe every now and then. We tiptoe. But for the most part, praise God, Sister Marcy, there's something in our hearts. I want to please God. I want to please God. There's some, I don't go to a bar, not because I can't go to a bar, but I don't go to the bar because I want to please God. When you don't do those things, it's a sacrifice. The Bible says repentance. What does repent mean? Repentance means to die to the things you really want to do. What's wrong with our world today is when if I fall in love with my half-sister, there's no longer a barrier there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Homosexuality is just like any other sin. Why are people coming out of the closet? Because it's now. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, I believe that there's apostolics that have a homosexual spirit, but they don't pursue it. Intellectually, not spiritually, but he's a dog. 
and he wanted to have sex with his sister. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse number 22. If you got that, you can throw that up. Deuteronomy 27, verse 22. Praise God. The Bible says, Cursed is the one who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. There's something in Adam and he wanted. He's lusting after his half sister. The Bible says in Samuel chapter 12 to 13, he thought hard. I can't do it. I can't do it. Why? Because Deuteronomy 27, Deuteronomy 27, 22 is in the word of God. Sometimes there's some things in your life you want to chase after. But then all of a sudden the preacher preaches about it. And all of a sudden you have to make a choice. Am I going to pursue my lust or am I going to obey the word of God? And he had settled in his mind. Every day he came down to breakfast, there was this gorgeous, young, virgin, female that sat across him in the table, across the table. And everything in his body ached for her. But he come to the conclusion, nope, I ain't gonna do it because Deuteronomy 27 is in the word of God. And it's sin, it's immoral. But God, can't you let it slide? No! Don't get me wrong. I did, I, does God forgive sin? Yes, he does. But the consequences live on forever. Praise God. I find a lot of teenagers grow up in the church. They love God. They love God. They love God. And they're, they're straight. They're virgins. They love God. Hold on to your virginity. Yes. outside of marriage. Yes. Can God forgive you if you don't? Yes. Are the con yes. There will be consequences that you will live a lifetime with. You can come back and you can shout the glory and I hope you do. But the consequences of it will last through your life. Young people hold on to your virginity until he says I do or she says I do. But what I have recognized is that the dude has his fun and then leaves and mom's stuck with the baby. Yes, yes. Talk about it, Brother Jerry. Yes. Talk about it, Pastor. True. Talk about it, Brother Jerry. Talk about it, Pastor. True. Talk about it, Pastor. True. Too many babies. Too many babies. Yes. Praise God. Yes, Talk about it, Jerry. I'm convinced that Adam by himself would have lasted. But we come to verse number three. And this is what I'm focusing on today. This is what I'm preaching to you about. You gotta watch your friends. Because you wanna go to heaven. You wanna do what's right. And you try. What's the matter? The problem is when you let your friends influence you. Go back to verse two. Go back to verse 2. He was sitting there sometimes. There's some things we want to do. Somebody cuts us off, elder and traffic. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, how many times have you said, if I weren't a Christian? Just 
Verse 3. But Abner had a friend. My Lord. Better watch your friends. Thank you. I just give you the microphone. Please. I love you, Sister Brown. There's all kinds of us to be in the same church. I'm glad you put up with it. I'm glad that you're glad. <laughs> On our own, we can make it because we got the Holy Ghost and we got the Word of God. David said, Thy Word. This is from the Son and Father of Adam. Thy Word. Have I hid in my heart when you want to do wrong, when you want to go to the wrong places? If it was just left up to you and the word in your heart, you wouldn't do it. But all of a sudden, it's not just about you, but it's about How many of us in this house today perhaps grew up in the church and we tried our best to stay holy and pure and righteous, but then all of a sudden we found ourselves in high school. And when we got to high school, we started hanging out with the wrong crowd. We chose the wrong friends. David said, I'm glad when they said it to me, take that let's go into the house of the Lord. You might find church boring. You might find church just a waste of time. But I want you to know I want to be found in the house of God with those of my precious faith. Hallelujah. When I'm feeling overwhelmed, when I'm feeling tired and weak, take me to the church house where my friends are. I want to go to the church house of those of my precious faith. devil's desire is that we come out. Jesus. He's going to send people in our path that will say that they're our friends, our co-workers, family members. They will come around us. They don't know what's going on. They don't know the spiritual struggle on the inside. But then all of a sudden we open up our mouths and we start to complain about how challenging it is to live for God and all the things we can't do. Hold on to God. Hold on to God. Stop speaking. Keep your mouth shut and praise God. got a skirt on. Why you always got a dress on? Well, my church preaches it. No, man, wrong answer. Because I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. But you don't have to do it on net. Yes, I do. It's a barrier. It's a way to worship. I'm not going to do You know the apostolic church down the street, they let that go. I don't care. Right. That's right. That's right. Yes. It's hard for me to give up my skirts. It's hard for me. Hallelujah. But you know what? If I lift it up to my friends, they talk me right out of it. True that. Yes, sir. You can tell a lot. By man's friends. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 But Ammon had a friend. Up to this point, Ammon had the ability to control his lusts. But then his friend stepped in. Yes. Up until this point in time, up until verse number three, it was a challenge for Ammon. But he can overcome that challenge because of the word of God in his life. Up until verse 3, Ammon had everything he could ever hope for. He was destined to be the next king. But he had a friend. And 
Ammon had been Ammon had been taught what the word of God said. Ammon knew the word of God. And it was it was be it would be hard for him to do anything to his sister. But Ammon had a friend. And Ammon had a conscience. And his conscience stopped him from sinning. But Ammon had a friend. What helps us avoid sin? What keeps us from the challenges of sin? Holding on to the word of God. Like Ammon, we know what God said. Like Ammon, you and I both, we all have consciences. It tells us what's right. It tells us what's wrong. Praise God, if I'm born again, child of God, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized in Jesus' name, i got the Holy Ghost running within me. The Holy Ghost tells me what's right and what's wrong. But Ammon had a friend. Praise God. Let me see if I can hurry up here so much. We read in verse number 18 of that same chapter. Not only did Amnon's sin affect him. By the way, ladies, I don't know why. It's not in my notes. Ladies, go home and read uh, 2 Samuel chapter 13. Read it. Amen. Read it. You don't need to preach it to preach it to you. Just read it for yourself. Amnon was done with her. Yes. Kicked her out of the bedroom. Yes. She came over, and I won't go into a lot of detail. She came over, just uh, as Second Samuel says, she came over, she did all that stuff that, that Amnon told David to do. By the way, talk about it. Why did David not stop, step in as a daddy and stop it? Because he committed the same thing with Bathsheba. And when you, when you are a participant in sin, it's tough for you to speak against that sin. David knew what was up when he sent his daughter to his son's room. But he never stopped it. She got there. She begged him not to do it. She begged her brother not to. He told all the servants in the past to get out and lock the door. After it, she begged him, please, you're, you're my brother. We don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. If we're not children of God, who knows where our minds will take us? Yes. Yes. Read, read it for yourself. I can't even go into a lot of details. But she begged him not to. And he basically told her, shut up. And he forced herself upon him. And as soon as he was done, he whistled the servants to come back and didn't even call her by name. Just said, take this woman out of this world. Read it. He went from, he was loving, talking sweet to her. But when he was done, he kicked her to the curb yeah. and just treated her like a dog. Yeah. Sisters, that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Real, real, real. Dude's going to sweet talk you. And then after it's done, he's going to kick you to the curb yes. like a dog. Yes. He destroyed Tamar's life. Verse 18 and 19. She, she, she was bitter. She didn't want to face anyone. Verse number 20. She never got over what happened to her. She never fell in love with a man. She never married she never had children. She never had normal affections for a man. She was emotionally scarred for the rest of her life. All of this because Amnon had a friend. <laughs> when you mess up, it's going to scar others. Praise God. Absalom took his sister, his, his full his full sister, Absalom Tamar, same mom, same dad. She came out of the house. Um, and Absalom, her full brother, took her in because she couldn't go anywhere else. She couldn't stay in David's house because that's where she was abused. Her brother Absalom, 
Her full brother Absalom took her in. She told Absalom what happened. Absalom and David were father and son. Because of what happened to Tamar, because Ammon had a friend, Absalom's relationship with his dad was messed up forever. Yes, it was. Yes, yes, forever. Yes, yes. yes. When you mess up, it's yes. not just you. Yes. All those around you yes. are messed up and scarred. Yes, it was a crazy family, but what made it worse is Amnon had a friend. Be careful who your friends are. Because your friends are not only going to mess you up, your friends are going to mess up your family. Your friends are going to mess up your relationships. Praise God. Be careful about your friends. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verse number 3. 3, 3, Amos 3, 3 says, Can two walk together? Except they agree. Be careful who you're walking with. Be careful who you're walking with. Because if you're not agreeing with them now, at some point in time, you let them be still, stay a part of your life. At some point in time, you're not going to walk very far until the two of you are agreeing. And you might say, well, Pastor, I'm going to marry him because I can turn him around. No, that's not only how it works. Come on. Preach. Come on. Well, Pastor, I'm going to go out for I'm going to go out with him for just a little bit because I'm going to convert him. I've been pastor 30 years. 30 years I've been doing this. I've never seen anybody go get one and bring him in the house of God. I've seen many, many say they're going to do it, but then backslide it. Can two walk together unless they agree? Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I mean, I'm going to clean them up. No, you're not. You take a white horse and you run a white horse through a mud puddle. That mud puddle doesn't turn white. That white horse turns to mud. Can two walk together unless they agree? You got to be careful. He was on the right track, but he had a friend. Yes. And Pastor, I don't do drugs. But are you hanging out with druggies? Yes. Oh, Pastor, I'm not having extra, extra matter of sex. Are you hanging out with those that do? Yes. I, I know he I know he smokes cigarettes, but, but we're just friends. I'm just Can't walk together unless you agree. Someone said, Praise the Lord. Praise God. Jesus. 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 I'm done. Jesus. I got more. Oh, glory. You can tell us by a man's friends. I think it was said today. Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. What a friend.
said thank you to your friend Jesus. Can you go, Dr. Junior, Jesus? Thank you. 